There is much more in the Gospels about the dangers of being rich than people like to say. I have to say I cannot see the biblical foundation for what's called the health and wealth gospel. That Jesus or the Lord has promised that every believer will always be healthy and his intention is to make every believer wealthy. That teaching is built on some very insecure foundations in scripture of a few texts here and there interpreted one way. It is not the general teaching of scripture, taking the whole Bible and the, particularly the whole New Testament. There's a difference between the Testaments, an important one. Israel had no clear understanding of what happened after death. That comes out so many ways. What they had revealed to them was all concerned with this life. And in the Psalms you'll find phrases like, the dead do not praise you. They believed that after you died you went to a, a shadowy place called Sheol, where you slept in the Lord. And their favorite phrase for death was, fallen asleep. They had no concept of real life beyond the grave. So they had to learn in this life rewards and punishments, blessing and curses. And so God cursed them physically and he blessed them physically. And Abraham was a rich man and so were many others. Even so, the rich found great temptations. Solomon is a classic example. And he didn't master his money. And immediately he died, the whole country split in civil war as the result of his spending and his taxing, which was way beyond what it should have been. But in the New Testament, Life and immortality have been brought to light and the resurrection has made a huge difference. And the whole concept of life after death, which is only hinted at rarely in the Old Testament, is now central to the New Testament. And therefore rewards for good living can be put into the new life, which is more real than life before death. And that has meant a whole switch between Old and New Testament in terms of rich rewards. I throw that in, check me out, but you'll find that there is a very great difference of dimension there between the two Testaments. That, let's come back to keeping money, making money, in the right way, the temptation is to build it up and keep it. Is that wrong? There is more in the Gospels against being rich than we like to think. It is very hard being rich. It's very hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom. But I'm interested to know, and is it hard being rich after you've got into the kingdom? And the answer seems to be yes, very hard. There are dangers in having a lot of money. Christ himself didn't. He was a poor man, relatively speaking. Others gave to him, and Judas kept the money as the treasurer of the disciples, but you know what happened to Judas? He was tempted to sell Jesus for money. And 30 pieces of silver was the price of a slave. That meant that he could be one step up in society as a slave owner. What an amazing thing to do for the treasurer of the 
disciples to want money more than his Lord. Now, there have been all sorts of theories to excuse Judas, which have been preached around the world, but the one that's given in the Bible is that he began to love money. And I believe we should take that as the final explanation. That's the one given by the Lord. Money became just a bit too much for him. And church treasures have been known to do the same. Handling a lot of money is not easy. It carries its own temptations. And there are many, many New Testament references which favor the poor. Jesus in the Beatitudes in Matthew says, blessed are the poor in spirit. But in Luke's version of another sermon he preached, says, blessed are you poor and woe to you rich. And he meant not poor in spirit, but poor in money and rich in money. And when he said woe, that is a curse. Blessed is a blessing, but woe is a curse. And we should be very careful not to use that word. I've heard parents say to their children, you better do that or woe betide you. They little realize they're cursing their children. We have to be careful what we say. But Jesus both blessed and cursed people. For every blessed, he added a woe in Luke's version of the sermon that he preached. A sermon he preached not on a mountain, but down on the plain. And in a down-to-earth way, he said, blessed are the poor. Woe to you rich. There's enough in the Bible, in the New Testament anyway, about the danger of riches and the blessing of poverty to pull any preacher of health and wealth up with a jerk and make him go back to his Bible and look more carefully at what he's offering people. Because the offer of health and wealth is exactly what the world wants. They go together. There's no use having wealth if you don't have health. You can't enjoy your wealth if you don't have health. And so they go together. And the advertising world knows that and they go for both those. There is more advertising of health pro products and sale of health products today than ever before in human history. So we are encouraged to get wealth and health in consumerist society. Is the gospel just going to join in that? I don't believe it ought to do so. It is rare for a rich person to enter the kingdom, but it's not impossible. God is the God of the impossible, and it happens. But now someone is in the kingdom and rich, they have their own peculiar temptations to face. Let's sort of see the progression of how wealth can destroy a man. It starts with ambition. An ambition to want to make money. Very common ambition. And the ambition is born out of basic emotional needs and the belief that money will meet those needs. Let's look at three basic needs that the fallen man has. First, he needs to be secure. And he sees money as the path to security. According to Jesus, he's a fool. As he says in the parable of, not the parable, the actual teaching of a man who said, I'll build my, pull my barns down and build bigger and expand my business. And Jesus said, you're a fool. You are totally insecure. You're planning as if you're going to live forever. And that, I suppose, is the basic temptation 
to all of us that we think we're going to live here forever and that this is our home and therefore the more secure we are here the better and this emotional need for security means that we have an ambition to make money actually the facts are that the more you have the more time and energy will be needed to keep it and the more you have the more you will be afraid of losing that can be a big worry and the more you have the more you want it's extraordinary it just happens people who've made enough money to survive the rest of their life in comfort still want more still want bigger business still want still have this ambition 